In this video, we're going to talk about what tools I use to develop. So I was asked in the comments, uh, and I've been asked several times, what tools that I use to develop and what FTP program do I use? What text editor do I use? So I haven't really prepared for this video, so it might get a little bit long, but I will link in the description the different pieces that I use so that you can skip to that part of the video if you need to, or if you wanna watch the entire thing, sounds good to me. So let's get started. I'll try to explain it the best I can and, and what I use, all right? One of the things that I use is Dropbox. So I upload everything to Dropbox and I don't keep hardly anything on this local computer at all because if the computer's damaged or broken, destroyed, whatever, or if someone steals it, I can go and buy a new computer, um, install Dropbox, it'll download everything and I'm ready to go. So as I save a file when I'm working, uh, it automatically saves Dropbox, it automatically uploads it, and and we're, we're good to go. So even if I leave my laptop at the office and I'm at home and I need to do something, Dropbox is also installed at home, so I have all the updated files for the websites and stuff that I use there. So that helps a whole lot. Um, one of the things, the other thing that I do is I have a backup system that I've built. It's just a it's just a shell command that backs up all the sites that are in my Dropbox website folder. Not the entire Dropbox, just the website folder. So in Dropbox, I make a folder called websites, um, which is which is here on my sidebar of Finder. Um, and in that websites folder is each individual website that I work on. Um, and so here on this command here, each site command. Basically what it does is it goes to this website folder and makes a copy of every, uh, makes a basically a snapshot of what those files look like at the time. That way if, um, and I do this every day before I start working, that way if something goes wrong and I mess up something, I can go back to that backup and it was before I started work today. So if I click each site command, basically it's gonna jump through and start going through each website that um, that I have in that website folder. So it's going to do a backup. So we can let that run. And then that goes into this folder here called backups, which it sits there and builds and builds. And, and then I move that over to a backup server later on, a backup storage device. All right. So Dropbox is, is important for me because it saves everything, like I said, and then backing up, um, to a zip file of the site before I do it. Because if I do something in Dropbox, if I open a website and I make a change, it'll automatically save to Dropbox and then will automatically update Dropbox on every device that I have. So it's important that I do kind of a quick backup. Um, that way I have everything before I started working that day. And if I mess up one site, I can go back and pull that back up and go, oh, this is where, this is where I broke it. All right, so that's the file structure kind of that I use, right? Um, then we use Amazon Web Services as our hosting. So we're set up with um, an RDS and Route 53. So Amazon is who we host with. We have very tight security for Idea Pro and all of our customers. So for us to be able to even connect via FTP or SFTP, or even in Shell, we have to be on the VPN. And so we have a VPN set up through AWS, and I use a program called TunnelBlick, which is T-U-N-N-E-L-B-L-I-C, TunnelBlick. And I can connect here to IdeaPro, and it'll connect to our VPN. And once it's connected, now we have an IP address and now we're connected. So before I can even FTP any files, I have to be connected to the VPN, all right? So I'm gonna use our, my downloads folder here for this example. So if this was, as an example, our website folder, 
my website folder in Dropbox, I can create a new folder and we're going to call it testing site. We'll do hyphen. All right. And I always name the folder the same thing as the folder in the server. So the first thing that we would have in that folder would be a public HTML. Right? So now we have testing site and inside there we have public HTML. So now the, the writing software or the text editor that I use is Sublime. And I can take this testing site and drag it over here and drop it on Sublime. And it opens up now, opens up Sublime, and it has this folder in here. So here's the public HTML. So if this was a real site, we would have the WordPress stuff in there, or if it's not WordPress, we'd have the, the, H, the files in there for the site. So this Sublime works really fast for me, works really great, um, but it does not come with an FTP program. Now, one of the ones that I use is FileZilla, if you're familiar with FileZilla. But the thing with FileZilla is, is I don't want to write code, then have to open FileZilla, upload it to the server. I want to be able to save a file and upload it um, instantly. I don't work on a local um, you know, stack. I don't work, I don't have PHP, MySQL installed on my Mac and do a local um, because I want to make sure that everything works right on the site. And so I've tested, I've done development on local before. Everything looked fine. I thought everything was great. I got everything, I uploaded everything to the live site and something was broken. Um, and it could have been a URL structure or something like that. So I like to do everything on a live staging area. So if I had a new client that was theirurl.com, I might go and purchase because they're, it's only $12 and to me that's it's worth it. I might purchase their URL dot uh, dev dot com, you know, and, and make sure that the search engines don't find it. That way I can install the SSL, make sure everything's working, develop everything on there, um, even if it's hidden from the public. And I know everything is working that way. When we go live, I, I have no issues. So I definitely have to have an FTP program with inside of uh, Sublime. And as I said, it doesn't come with one. So if we go to Google and we do a Sublime, Sublime SFTP, the first result here is WBONnet Sublime Packages SFTP. So we're going to open that. This is the FTP program that I use inside of Sublime. And you can do a free trial and you can buy now is $30. $30 might seem like a lot for an FTP program, but when, when FileZilla is free, but as many times as I FTP files up and down um, while I'm working, it saves me a lot of time. Um, I probably in a, in a day, probably FTP 1500 files. I mean, literally saving, typing, saving, typing, saving, I save constantly. So for me, the $30, 30 US dollars for Sublime FTP is, is definitely worth it. Now, if you purchase this, I don't use the SVN. If I'm working on a site that has a, um, someone working on it with me in the development area, I use GitHub. So I use GitHub as the um, version control or SVN, whatever you want to call it. And I just use Sublime FTP as the FTP program. So once you've purchased it, there's an installation here. Super simple to install it. If you know how to install anything with Sublime, um, it's using you know the package control. It's super simple to install. And there's not really any settings that you have to do. You just install it and it works. Now, once you're in Sublime, you can click on this, you know, this main folder here, and there there will now be SFTP slash FTP in this folder. So you can map to remote. And what that does is it opens up a JSON file. And if you look, we have now an SFTP config.json file in here. 
So this is where you'll set up the FTP information or SFTP information. Um, I'm not gonna go through the details of setting this up, but basically upload on save, you can change this to true, which I do all the time. Um, the rest of this is, I leave all default. The host is, you know, your site.com, whatever your host is, um, the user, and then the password. So for us, everything is FT SFTP. So type here, if you're just using FTP, you can use it like that, FTP. And SFTP if it's secure. We always use secure. If you use FTP, it will default to port 21, so you don't even have to uncomment this out. If you use SFTP, it will default to port 22, so you don't have to comment this out. If you're using a, a different port, which is what we do, you can change that port number here, okay? We don't have a password because we actually use a key file. So down here, we uncomment SSH key file, and then on this computer, I have a key file that is for our server. So I can put in the location of that key file, which will be, you know, blah, 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 users slash Joshua Herbison slash, and then wherever that key file is. Okay. File permissions and directory permissions. Um, I usually leave everything else just like it is other than the path here. Ours is www, oops, www.example.site, you know, or what do we call it, testing site? It would be testing site. So, and then we don't include the public HTML because we actually have the public HTML here. So as you save files inside of this folder, it will automatically put those files in that folder, all right? Even if that folder doesn't exist, it will create that folder. Okay, so that is the FTP program that I use. Um, the development that I do, I do it on a MacBook Pro. It's a 2016 MacBook Pro. Uh, I bought it in December of 2017, uh, much before the 2018 MacBook Pros came out. My previous computer was a 2012 MacBook Pro that I absolutely loved. I had no issues with it whatsoever. Um, the only reason why I upgraded to this one is because I needed a retina display and I've had more issues with this computer than I ever had with, I never had any issues with my 2012 MacBook Pro other than it didn't have a retina display. So bought this one. I've had some issues with the keyboard. I've had issues with the touchpad. I've had issues with the USB type C, um, plugs. Uh, so um, that's it. I mean, it's, uh, that's the development that I do. Uh, this video is probably going to be a little bit shorter than what I thought it was going to be. I'm trying to think of what else that I use. Um, it's kind of one of those everyday things that you don't really, I don't even really know what to explain. Um, like I said, FileZilla, I use it if I'm doing a lot of files because SFTP and Sublime, uh, doesn't really give me an idea of what's going on. It just it FTPs the files. Um, Camtasia, I'll, I'll talk about that. So for, for the video editing, or for shooting these videos, I use Camtasia 3 to record the screen capture video. Um, I shoot everything on a Canon DSLR, so if you're, at, so if you're wondering about the actual video here, um, the audio is recorded with a Rode mic connected to a Zoom. Um, yeah, I guess that's it. Um, trying to think of what else that would be, that I would need to explain. Hmm. I, I like to keep it as simple as possible. Oh, for passwords, I use LastPass. Um, LastPass helps a lot with saving passwords. I have over 300 passwords, depending, uh, you know, for websites and software and different things like that. So LastPass is um, a huge benefit for us and it gives that extra security. So I'll link all this stuff in the description so you guys can go take a look at it. And and um, if I missed anything, let me know. Uh, 
I can't think of anything else. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like it, uh, click the like button if you like it and subscribe and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks.